Please trust and believe. See, the only way that we're going to make it to heaven is we have to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we wasn't there when Christ lived. Yeah, all right. So our opportunity of being saved is making it to heaven is upon our trust and our belief. Amen. And we're going to discuss that as we move on forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Belief in Christ is finished work. Uh -huh. Amen. And that through Amen. Christ we can stand before God justified, meaning not guilty. All right. All right. Somebody say not guilty. Not guilty. In other words, we can worship and praise God and live in perfect peace without feeling guilty of our past. That's what grace is. That's what grace is. God allows you to have a relationship with him regardless of whatever you did in your past, regardless of the person that you were in your past, you still have the opportunity to salvation if you trust and believe and you declare and you are committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Paul, 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 Paul goes on to discuss in the earlier chapters that freedom that comes from being saved is number one, we have the freedom from the power of sin. Two, freedom from the domination of the law. And three, freedom to become like Christ and discover God's limitless love. See, once you're saved, and once you accept Christ and you are committed and you declare it, then you are open to discover God's limitless love. That means unconditional. That means agape. Yes, Lord. Hey. Now, many of you know the scripture in the Bible about to whom much is given, much is required. You see, starting in chapter 12, now that we get into chapter 12, Paul moves from discussing the theological to the practical and the application. Right. See, in the first chapters up until 11 in the book of Romans, Paul is giving us the theological aspect. Yeah. He's introducing himself. He longed to see them. Right. Right. He wanted to worship them and right. declare the faith and the commitment and all these different things of what the gospel is about and how that we have access to a relationship with God based upon our trust and our belief. That's chapters 1 through 11. Now, after he discusses all that in chapter 12, he gets into now the practical and the application. That means there are some requirements for the grace and mercy that we receive from God. We just don't get it and just think we can do what we want to do without applying some of these things that have been brought to us. Amen. You see, here's when he gives us the guidelines. Yes. For living as a redeemed people in a fallen world. Somebody say redeemed. In other words, he is letting us know that we are saved from the bondage of sin, but there's a certain way that we have to live. Yes, it is. We're going to talk about that for a moment. The whole concept and the reason why Jesus had to come is the simple fact of giving a living, perfect example of how we should live up until his return. He was the blueprint of what the gospel and what we should be. He was committed to serving he declared the gospel. He was redeemed or allowed us to be redeemed. He taught us how to live and trust and believe because he knew that there were going to be plenty of people that were going to be introduced to the gospel, gospel thousands of years after he was gone. Which is us. So we never had the opportunity to meet our CDs, but therefore we still had the opportunity to have a relationship with him because he was a blueprint for us to follow. In verses 1 and 2 of chapter 12, Paul talks about presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service, and also being transformed by the renewing of our minds. 
a living sacrifice. So one of the things that we have to understand is that we was born in a sinful world. Satan is the prince of this world. Satan is the antichrist. Anti means opposite of. So that means if God wants us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, then Satan need requires a dead sacrifice. In other words, dead people can't make it up to heaven. You have to have some fire and stuff up in you. And that's going to come through your faith and your belief in Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to present a living sacrifice. You have to be committed. You have to declare it. You have to be willing to go through whatever it takes because your reward is not here on earth. Your reward is when we make it up there with him. It says that we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, that's part of the problem right there. The word says if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become That's talking about the mind. Yes. Yes. Your mind is like a CPU on a computer. If you feed more bad stuff, that's how you're going to react. If you're feeding more good stuff, that's how you're going to react. That's why the Bible says to meditate on God's word day and night. See, it's amazing that God loved us so much that he gave us a blueprint because he knows that the only way Satan can get to us is attacking our mind. That's why the Bible says the word have I hidden in my heart. See, that's the one thing that Satan can't get to is your heart. But when you hide the word in the tablet of your heart and you apply it and you keep your mind protected, from Satan attacking it and making you do things the opposite of what Christ would do. Right. Right. Yes. All right. Amen. See, when you renew your mind, Hallelujah. and you truly renew your mind, it's easy for you to give, forgive when people persecute you. Amen. It's easy for you to love in spite of. Yes. Part of the reason we come to church all Sundays on communion just drinking damnation to our souls because we know we have forgot certain people for certain things in our life. And we come to church every Sunday, day in and day out, knowing that we have not only forgive other people, but forgiving ourselves. And we keep putting on. All right. Renew another mind. See, when you renew your mind, the things that used to be, you don't want to do no more. Right. You're committed to go through the good or the bad. You're willing to lay your life on the line for what is right. You're willing to love one another. If your pastor or your husband or your wife, if you know they're right, you stand behind it. You're committed to it, even if that means losing everything that you have. You cling to that which is good. You stray away from that which is evil. I'm just giving you the word. Amen. Amen. Yes. In verses 3 through 8, Paul goes on to say, not to think more of ourselves than we ought to. That's another problem. We think because we go to church every Sunday and wear these nice suits and dresses that we are more than the sinners out there. We tend to forget that we still sinners ourselves. I've seen more unity in games than I have in church folk. All right. Yes. Amen. True. That's it. Like it. True. We look at those people on the outside and we toot our nose up on them. We won't help them. We won't guide them. We won't tell them what they're doing is right. But then they have more unity than us. They look at us and say, why should we follow y'all? But we see y'all talking about other church folks all the time. At least we take care of our own. Yeah, we might gang bang, but nobody's in our game is hungry. Everybody got a place to stay. Everybody got clothes on their feet. If this one gets put out, then they can move in with us. We we fight for one another. We even go so far as to we kill for one another. And you wonder why so many kids are joining games. All right. All right. Amen. Those people, even though what they believe in is wrong, they present their bodies a sacrifice yeah. for each other and what they believe in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the United States has so many enemies. Because we go around and we try to implement what we call democracy on these Muslim countries. But these Muslim countries let their religious leaders run. They really have faith and belief in what they practice. So who are we to tell them that they're wrong and they see all we do is do hypocritical things over here? Amen. 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 Amen.
but we had to learn to talk about them. I see more unity in the Muslim world than I see in the Christian world. Those people present their bodies a living sacrifice. On Ramadan, they don't eat from sun up to sundown. They pray three times a day. Those are some of the most disciplined people that you will ever see. Paul, Paul goes on to say that there are many members of one body and all members don't have the same office. Amen. Somebody say one body. one body. See, as church folk, we are one body. Amen. Christ is the head. Amen. That's one of the problems. Everybody think that Deacon so and so is the head, or Sister so and so is the head, because she paid more tithes than everybody else in the church. No, Christ is the head. We are all members of one body, and we all have different offices. Part of the problem is, is that we're operating in gifts that God did not give us. Hallelujah. If you are a youth director, you be the youth director and not the musician. If you are the musician, you be the musician and not the usher ball president. If you are the usher ball president, you be the usher ball president and not the head deacon. If you are the head deacon, you be the head deacon and not the associate minister. If you are the associate minister, you be the associate minister and not the pastor. Stay in place, know your job, and do your job. That even goes so far in the home. The Bible says that the man has dominion over everything. That includes that woman too. Part of the reason why our relationships are not working because you have women that are trying to do men jobs. When the Bible is, when Eve committed the first sin, God didn't go to Eve. He went to Adam. Yes. <laughs> Being disrespectful, God is a God of order. If you notice, God goes by chain of command. That's part of the problem. We don't want to stay at our place. Yes. And we wonder why we can't get people to come to church. We don't know our place. But on your job, you let them people tell you what to do all day long. And all you say is, yes, master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on, Paul goes on to talk about the, the different gifts according to the grace that is given to us. I just spoke on this. We need to stay in the gift. We need to ask God what is our gift. Right, right. That's part of the problem. Anytime somebody tells you that, hey, you're giving to this, you go in there instead of praying and asking God yourself. Stop accepting what everybody else tells you. Have a relationship with God and go to him for yourself. Because what you don't know is sometimes when you operate a gift God hadn't given you or a position that God has not blessed you in or whatever, you can bring that on the damnation to yourself, but the folks you're trying to lead is possible. But then you get to feeling a little edgy on the inside and your body get to tingling and a few tears come down, the first thing you want to go say is, I believe the Lord called me to preach. <laughs> that might not necessarily always be the case. You might be an exhorter. You might be a teacher. You might be a prophet. There are other gifts that operate that help the overall ministry of Jesus Christ. What you mean to do, if you're not sure that you go to God and you pray on it, if you're not sure after that, that's what you go to your head for. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. All right. Amen. Have your way now. Now, I'm getting closer to closing, but in verses 9 through 19, and this is part of what I really like about Apostle Paul, is that Paul was basically talking about a service of love to all. Yes. Somebody say love. love. That's one of the 